Amen. Amen. Unless God is removed from being God, your offspring will dwell safely. Your children, your grandchildren, don't worry about them. All you need to do is worry about how you are investing and what you are investing. Focus on what you are investing into God. How much of God are you pursuing? How much of God do you love? How do you serve Him? How much of, at your leisure moment, what do your children here see you do? I discovered that I'm too much on the computer. And Flora and Ali has been telling me. They say, yeah, Pastor, you're always on the computer. I say, I'm always on the computer because that's where the information is. You gotta get it. I, I, for some reason, I'm just hungry for information. Whether I understand it all or not, I don't know. But sometimes I, I, just, I just want to know. I want to read it. Is it up? I want to be the first to know it. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, not all of it is important. Some of most of it is junk. So what I have decided to do, I, I'm, I'm trying to change and adapt. I now put on my Bible. It's read for me on my phone while I'm going up. I read for me in the car while I'm working on the computer. My Bible is being read. Even when my mind strays, my mind is still catching a bits and pieces here. And it's reminding me. I'm learning. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Are we together? Are we together? Yeah. Okay. So parents, this is, he said, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. That's the verse we read previously. He says, I will make, this is a, another one I love in the book of Isaiah 61. Verse 89. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations. How many of us want our children to be popular, to be well known? Nobody wants to have a child and hide it under some, some, don't want your child to be in Nineveh, if you know what I mean. People live there, but I don't know where it is, or Timbuktu. You anybody know where Timbuktu is? <coughs> it's in Africa somewhere, all right? Nobody wants to go to be a child hidden in some village. Everybody has the desire that uh, my child will grow to become somebody important, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who will be influential, somebody who will be able to help people. And this is what God's word is saying. <clears throat> I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring, that is your offspring as parents, will be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. There's a distinguishing factor. I am excited about that. You know, when people see your kids, they will say, that one, that, that is somebody whom God has blessed. It is God working with them. Is that not a good way to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. Or for your kids, your children to introduce, to be known? That one? Oh no, that one is a how many of us know the name of the owner of Colgate? Colgate. Colgate was a, a Christian. The owner of Colgate was a Christian. What about Taje that just closed? How do you call it Taje? The, the store? Taje? Yeah? Target. Okay, Target. French call it, call it Taje. Okay, so Target used to be a Christian company before, many years ago, founder. Wait, what I'm trying to say is that there are so many examples of people who were in business, but they served the Lord. Not only did their businesses grow, but their businesses also were, became a blessing, a household name. You understand what I'm saying? Because God becomes their first. God was their first. God was all that they had. They, they stood straight, they refused to compromise, and they kept sowing. And what the Bible says, and whatever you lay your hands to do shall prosper. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. There are so many other companies that are owned by Christians. Do you know that the Mary Kay, Mary Kay ladies, Mary Kay, the founder, a Christian, yeah, became a household name. So when we fear God, and you're doing your business in the fear of God. And so many, I heard some people say, if you're a Christian, you cannot be doing business because business is dirty. If you're a Christian, you cannot be doing politics. Politics is dirty. I say, come on, go read your Bible and stop fooling people. 
Christians are supposed to, be, to succeed in business and succeed in politics. Every area of leadership is supposed to be a Christian. Amen. Yeah, amen. Praise God. That's what we encourage our children to be. I like this one. He says, They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. In other words, you will not labor in vain. Your work is not a waste. When you get up in the, in the night to pray for your kids, when the kids are in bed and you wake your wife up or your wife wakes you up to say, let us pray for the kids, and your body is tired and you think you are wasting the time, no, your labor is not in vain. You are investing for them. When you read the Bible at dinner and your time is up and you know you have an appointment, but you say, appointment can wait, I'm going to read my Bible. You know, sometimes, to be honest with you, I put my son in bed and I have somebody to make a call and I, I say, the prayer is quick, you know. Okay, baby, let's pray quickly because I gotta go. I gotta have something to do, you know. But at the end of the day, I ask myself, what is more important? What is more important? Can that phone call wait? And my son has a way of telling you, Daddy, you gotta read the Bible. So I will pick the Bible and read it. And when I read, he said, Daddy, read more. Not so much that he is understanding everything, but he just wants your company right there. But the company is being accompanied by a culture that you have to read your Bible. Praise God. Praise God. And you know, the sad thing is that the Bible he has is a King James Version. Very difficult, even for... <laughs> so we have to look for the one that is simplified with Bible stories for children. Praise God. Don't think, don't think ever that you are wasting your time. And never think that your effort is... It's going, he says, they shall not bear children for calamity. Your children are not going to get into some awful trouble. There are some troubles that are good for health. What we call healthy, in psychology, they call it stress that is good for health. If you are stressless, you just, just live plain like a leaf. You, you die quicker. There is a stress that helps your blood to circulate. <laughs> you know, that one is enough. And he says, they shall be the offspring of the blessed, the, sorry, for there shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord. You are the blessed of the Lord, right? And your descendants with them. You are the blessed of the Lord. Remember, the first scripture we looked at says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. The fact that you honor the Lord, you are already blessed. Amen? Let me just be quick. The righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Oh, come on. There's so much, these are some of the responsibilities of children. When you say, I'm not going to lie in my business because of God, the Bible says because you walk in integrity, your children are blessed. Praise God. When we say, I'm going to tithe, as God blesses me, I pay my tithe because it's a covenant with God, out of all my abundance, the children are blessed. When you say, I'm going to walk in love, when you say, I'm going to prefer the other person, I give space to the other person so that the other person can also make it. One of the things I enjoy most in our church here is our generosity. Whatever we know, we share free. This is one church that I have been, I've been to several churches and I've been in several churches. This church particularly, we are very generous. Nobody hides any information. Oh, if I share with him, this person is going to succeed. No, no we don't do that. We are very generous, and we should keep it that way. If there is any way to change, is to make it even better. Amen. And I and I thank all of you that have the information. You know that you share so freely, supporting somebody. You are investing in the other person's life. They say when you lift somebody up, you go. When you bring somebody down, you go down. Praise God. In the fear of the Lord, <clears throat> one has strong confidence, and his children will have a refuge. So many scriptures. They are all in the bulletin there. So I'm going to just pause here today. They're in the bulletin for us to finish. At home. And we're going to pray for our children. Amen. Let me, let me, let me, if you don't mind, let me just jump, jump forward a little bit and to this, to this one. Can I say something? And reminding us. I'm reminding us. BBC last year, one of the lawmakers was saying, we regulate and make sure that the food we give to our dogs are healthy because you can be sued 
if a dog is poisoned. He say, how come we do not regulate the food that our own human or our own children eat? You know that when you go to the stores and all the things they tell you, uh, uh, this one two percent minus, how do you call it? Five percent out, fats, no fats, no, no sodium. All those things are not true. You know they are not true because there is no law monitoring the exact measurement. Sometimes they print the bottles before they start filling them up. If you know what I mean. So one of the things that you should also be careful to do is physical food. Let's try our best to make sure that our children eat what they should, not what they want to eat. Amen? Praise God. My wife used to say, yeah, my son doesn't, he doesn't eat beans. Does I say, what? He doesn't eat what? Beans? You go to work. I serve the beans. If, they pay, if I can't see the made in China at the bottom of the plate, he's not living. He eats it. Because there's a time to smile, there's a time to be a father. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's both ways. Responsibility. Another one is education. Choices we make. Educational choices we make. Sometimes the school that is closest to your home is not the best. Sometimes the place that is cheap is not the best. May not necessarily be the best. Amen. I know we know all these things are just reminding us. I'm talking to the converted. May not be the best. The values, the quality of education. And in Ontario here, every public school is the same. So I'm planning to build a school. Mm -hmm. And we can have our own top class. Top class. Somebody has done it. Pastor did in my country, who brought Harvard professors to teach in the universities. He owns this, the church has three universities. <coughs> a place where a friend of mine has children in a certain school where they, <coughs> they teach the new age thing. And my friend is not happy about that. But, but my friend is a godly person, so he teaches the children the right thing. But you know, sometimes it is harder to erase what is already printed in the mind of a kid than to plant a good one first. So we should be careful. Research the school. See the quality of the teachers. Please, especially these days that anything goes. Politicians will just approve of anything to win votes. And then the spiritual choices we make. Praise God. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. One of the youngest parents here. I'm learning quite a lot, and I'm learning every day that most times what I tell my son, don't do, goes from here, comes out of here. He's going to do exactly what I did. I like to do press ups at home, you know, so I got the clips that you do press ups with, and several times he will carry my, my clips, and he's doing it too. David, what are you doing? Daddy, let's do, let's do. He's calling me to do press ups. You know, other ways I do exercise, you see, sometimes it will do, you know, like, you know, kicking. I say, thank God you're doing it at home. But what we do is what they're going to do. Amen. And I'll stop shouting at my wife. Why? Because my son is going to learn. And my wife will stop shouting at me. So we have a quiet home, a more quiet home now than before. Don't record this one. Okay. <laughs> Edit that one. Okay, great. Please. But the reason is what we, the kids, we do what our parents do. We do what our parents do. If you sit on the TV and you're flipping it, I'm always on the computer. My son is always on the. Daddy, give me tablet, tablet, tablet. Put. Okay. No more. Praise God. When you stand up to pray, do not ask God to bless your children. That is a waste of your time. Thank God for blessing your children. Amen. Amen. And let me say something. If any of our children act in a way that is not in line, when you get up, don't even repeat what has been done. You speak the truth. Speak God's word. My baby, come on. 
She said, no. Let's say this is my daughter now. He's two years old. Example. And I said, don't push somebody or don't use a bad language. And she went ahead and used a bad language. What am I going to say? This is the word of faith. Word of faith. Okay? We speak as God speaks. God does not speak the problem. God speaks the, the answer. I will say, well, honey, don't use that word again, okay? It's not good. Jesus doesn't like it, then he doesn't like it. Now, your mouth is a blessing. Your mouth does not curse. Your mouth blesses. It encourages. I'm speaking what I want to see. If you know what I mean? If I say, oh my goodness, where did this kid get this dirty bad mouth from? I'm affirming. The reason is, we have to understand the power that you have as a parent. Like she said in her testimony, whatever you say is what you will have. That's what the word of God says. Whatever you speak is what you will have. So when I repeat that my daughter here has a bad mouth and where did she get it from? I have not even added anything positive. I've only affirmed the negative. But I should replace the negative with the positive. The Bible says that your mouth shall minister grace to somebody. If you know what I mean. That's what the word of God says. So replace. If he comes home, if he's doing something that is not right, kids want to push the boundaries. When you were their age, you push your boundaries too. You know? And in fact, some of us adults are still struggling to push boundaries. How many times my sister would tell me, text me to ask, uh, what, how are you taking care of your wife? Uh, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you take her shopping? Did you do this? So you give me all the long list of what I'm supposed to do. I don't read that to my wife. If not, she will say, your sister says so, you have to do it, so I don't read that. <laughs> okay? And it's giving me all the list of what I'm supposed to do to her. And then I say to her, hey, you know, I give my excuse. And my sister will say to me, I know that you are a man of God, and you love your wife as Christ loves the church. He's not telling me I told you to do that yesterday. Why did you do it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Praise God. Now, wait. anyway, I leave it there. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Amen. Speak positively. Speak positively to yourself. Speak positively to your business. Speak positively to your children. Mm -hmm. Speak positively to everything and everyone around you. Amen. Amen. Especially with the issue of school, when we have the new curriculum, I'm, I'm very serious about it, new curriculum that is being shared, that children are going to be educated in some certain ways, we, we parents should stand up to really let the kids know, let them hear the truth from home. Mm -hmm. This is what is right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yep. Even if you don't change your child from your school, from his or her school, you can tell your child what is right. You tell them, there's nothing wrong in saying the teacher is not right. The, I am right. That is right. That is why. My son has always a why and why not. I say because the I say so because the word of God says, there are some of them I say, because I say so. I'm the authority here in this house. I pay the bills. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. You are raising a generation that is going to impact the next generation for God. We are actually entrusted with the lives of our children because God trusts you. That's why he gave you those children. Amen. 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 If they don't look like you or act like you, don't get disappointed. They have to be like their father who gave them to you. And it does not matter what situation they may be in right now, you are still their parent. You can stand up and fight for them. You keep speaking, you keep holding. You know, how many of us know the name John Wesley? John Wesley. The mother had about, is it 11 or 12 of them? And two of them became great men of God that influenced the world, the whole world. And each day, the mother would dedicate one day a month to fast and pray for one of them, for each of them. So the, if today is the first day, today is your day. First day of the month is your day. We will pay attention to you, we'll check you up, talk to you, spend a lot of time with you. Next day, he picks another one. Because those days, having a lot of children was a good thing. 
is still a good thing. Praise God. The responsibility of parenting is not over and is, is way beyond just the physical or spiritual. We're going to pray for our children today. Amen. But well, before that, I'll pray quickly for the parents and then we pray for our children. So can somebody call our children? Can somebody call our children? If your children are not here, your adopted children are not here, the people you mentor are not here, wherever they are, you can speak God's word to them. Speak God's word to them. And God's word travels. The Bible says that the generation of the upright is blessed. He says, his seed shall be mighty influential upon the land. Generation of the upright is blessed. Generation of the upright is blessed. My father never took kindly to anybody who would say anything negative about me. It doesn't matter whether I was right or wrong. You don't, you said, you would say to my playmates, say, never, number one, he is a prince, physically, I am. If you know, I don't have a crown yet, and I wish I could dress. If I knew, I would have kept the prince room so I can get money out of it and plant churches. But you see, but every negative word, okay, here ends the message of the day. Okay, can you all come over here, please? Parents, can you bring Okay, could you come over here? Could you come over here? Can we pray for them? Just come and help me. Blessed they are going out. Blessed they are coming in. So let's pray for them. Lay your hands on, on them and bless them, okay? So bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the seed of the righteous is blessed, so you are blessed. Yes, blessed you are going out and coming in. You are filled with the wisdom and the power of God in the name of Jesus. Yes, Nicholas is already blessing himself. That's good. Yes, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed with power. Blessed with the Spirit of God. Blessed with the Word of God. Blessed with joy and peace. Yes, blessed with wisdom and understanding. And you will prosper and you will increase in everything that you do in the name of Jesus you are distinguished the favor of God rests upon you in the name of Jesus you are blessed you are the best in your schools you are the best on your streets you are the, the one that influences the group that you belong to because God gave you a special spirit of healing inside your heart for wisdom, okay? For victory. And all the children that are not here this morning, we declare them blessed wherever they are. Father, you know where each of them is. And we release your spirit upon them. And we thank you for your grace that rests upon them. We plug and, and CJ and, and, and Stephanie and, and Jeanette and everyone that is not here today. We bless them in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. The Bible says that you will be far from oppression. You are not going to live in fear and from terror, for it does not come near you. The angels of the Lord encamp around about you to deliver you, and you are precious in the sight of God. God said that He will give the heathen for your sins. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we make sacrifices on your behalf, but He will deliver you. He said, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. You cannot be poisoned. You will not be sick. You will not fail. You will not faint. You will not fall. The grace of God will keep you. You will grow in the knowledge of God. You will, you will experience God. You will know God. You, you are far from the negative and evil influence around us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for our children. And let them sit down. God bless you all our children. Heavenly Father, I pray for every parent here today. I thank you. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your strength in their lives. They shall not be weary. They shall not fail. They shall not faint. I thank you because you are faithful in providing all that you know they need to be able to raise the children according to your will for them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you open their ears, our ears as parents, to hear you. 
open our hearts to receive and help our mouth to speak life instead of death. To speak life and grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Father, we bless everyone this morning with the blessing of the Lord. We give you thanks. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.